Hey, welcome everybody um, to The Hunt, Charting the Path to Your Next Career Move. This is the title of the CBA workshop today. Um, I see quite a few people just sort of clicking in and arriving. Um, this is an event uh, hosted by the Center Business of, of, uh, for Business and the Environment at Yale and also the Career Development Offices at YSE, the Yale School of the Environment, newly renamed in July, and the Yale School of Management. Um, as, you, as you're just coming in, um, the uh, questions I'd love you to put into chat right now, if you can, is just hometown and where you're zooming in from, or home, you know, which you pick one. Um, it could be the same thing, obviously. Um, if you could do that, that'd be great. And then just uh, uh, just a word on like how you're, a number on how you're feeling right now. Like uh, from one is the lowest, uh, four is the highest. Um, and then a word or two on what would make this time most useful together. It's, 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 a, it's a compact hour. Uh, we're gonna be going at this uh, quite fast. Um, hopefully all, uh, all done by one Eastern. So if you could uh, just put in uh, to the chat function um, any or all of the answers to these questions as we're coming in, that'd be great. So hometown um, or where you're coming in from, how are you feeling? Um, I, uh, thanks Julie for, for, for being the first from Seattle with a 2.5 and you saw that I was doing a four point scale to get people off the middle, yet uh, Julie managed to go in the middle at 2.5. Um, nice Cameron from Tampa, San Diego, Auburn, Alabama. Um, zooming in, now they're coming in thick and fast. Uh, Florida, zooming in from London. Um, thanks, Atina. A three from and Delhi, so that's, we've got quite a few time zones here. And then Oakland on the West Coast, so, 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 so quite the range. Approaching networking during sales sheltering in place. We'll try and cover that. Thank you for that uh, tip um, or that ask. Additional any di additional resources are helpful. Ideas for older workers getting into young industry. Thank you for that suggestion. Belgium, excellent. We were missing out the, the sort of the European time zone there uh, in between India um, and and the West Coast. Awesome. And, and We'll let, we'll let people uh, continue to come in um, um, with, those, with those answers. Thanks, making connections outside academia. Hopefully we'll certainly cover, co cover that. Um, great, keep them coming in terms of a word or two and what will make this time most useful. I know your, your time is incredibly precious and this is your lunch time maybe if you're on the East Coast, um, dinner if on the West. Um, so we'll make the most of it hopefully. Okay, welcome to the session. Um, diversity uh, and identities, just a quick sort of, uh, sort of uh, set, how do I scene set the welcome? Diversity of people and ideas is proven to breed innovation, resilience, and excellence. It's, it's actively encouraged here in the room and, and really seek it out in, outside your, your life too. And especially on something like the job hunt, um, it's absolutely vital that you're bringing all the identities you hold that are important to you, both here to the session and also um, um, in general. And just a quick sort of sanity uh, sort of a piece in general, if, if people could mute their audio, that would be great. Um, and and um, Amy, maybe if you can spot anyone that doesn't have their audio muted, if you could, if you could mute them, that would be also, also great. Thank you. Um, so, uh, until, until at least we sort of speak to ask questions and things like that. Subtleties, uh, next one. If you need anything else said or done to make you feel truly welcome, uh, please let me know. Use the chat function. Um, and then forgive, be kind to each other um, in, this, in these strange times. And, and that includes being Kind, kind, kind to me. We'll see what I can get across for you that's useful, um, but um, um, let, let's, let, let's try and do that to each other here. And then pen and paper when you can for learning, for um, thinking about what's next. Um, that's, that's the key piece um, here. So that's why we made that work group available um, uh, in advance in the morning um, so that you could print out any of the sheets if you wanted or just have a scrap of paper handy. That would be great. Okay. And then, yeah, just, an, no, just a reminder again on mutes, please, uh, all around. I'm still getting quite a bit of background noise. So if, 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 if those could just check, they're, they're on mute, that'd be awesome. Great. Okay, well, well let's, let's go. So in, in less than an hour, this is going to be, as I say, a fast session. This is what I want to try and get across um, and help you with. Um, per, to become more purpose-driven, become more comfortable and excited even um, about the upcoming pursuit of opportunity. Um, that's on the title of this. A structure, and maybe experiment with in this hour, and then maybe adapt for yourself. I, I don't pretend to get it right um, for, for, for each and every one of you, but uh, uh, maybe a more structured approach that marries the head and the heart the brain and the gut of this, of this important time of your life. 
Um, and then on tactics, cover some strategy and tactics that should help maximize your time on this effort and maximize the success on this effort. Um, I did put a link in and it's at the bottom of every, every page on the bottom right hand side, the workbook that might help you with the hunt. It's also part of a bigger context of, of connected leadership, um, a model that I taught on a previous session and we may well come back with it on your path to connected leadership. Um, and that's the workbook on the right hand side. All the slides will be available in a post um, uh, email, a post session email, including um, a video recording of the, of the session. So you, you need not take speedy notes. Um, everything's going to be, be there for you. Um, and really, if I was to put those objectives into one quote, um, I've used it before, but it's like, I want everyone to hopefully, uh, or help, help everyone to get, get the most out of life. You know, sort of, I don't want it to get to the end of my life and I've just lived the length of it. I want to live the full width of it as well. And that idea, can we do that with our career search? So here's the, here's the sort of the, 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 the key pieces of today. Uh, how are we gonna use the hour together? Intros and starting points, and that'll be me to you. And, and then also I'm gonna get some, hopefully some feedback from you, um, not just in the chat function, thank you very much for that, but also a quick poll. Framework and structure, try and get that structure in and come from the sort of the top down on how you might be approaching this. And then strategies and, and, and tactics. Um, and we'll close on that. And then roughly sort of ten, first 10 minutes on, on the first one, the middle half hour on the framework and the structure, and then 15 minutes on, on strategies and tactics. Great. So in terms of uh, who I am, um, uh, it's uh, Peter Boyd. I'm a lecturer at the Yale School, School of the Environment. Um, I'm a resident fellow at the Center of Business for Environment and a founder of my own company, Time for Good. So all, all about all the stuff that we're covering today. Um, what makes me sort of me, as it says there, um, relatable. I've had a nonlinear career. I've definitely moved around a lot of different sectors. Curious. I think the, the, the book David Epstein wrote on range was, was written for people like me. I, I sort of enjoy the different contexts. Uh, resilient. I don't quit on things that I know are worth it. And, and positive. The, the via.org um, um, uh, test, which I recommend everyone takes, it's academically rigorous, and, and that sort of hope and zest comes out uh, with me on top. So that's that's what makes me me. In terms of experience, um, it comes across private sector, McKinsey, Virgin Group, uh, 12 years, uh, 12 jobs in 10 years in the Virgin Group, hopped across to help start a nonprofit, the Carbon War Room, uh, for, uh, which is focused on economic solutions to climate change with Richard Branson and others, um, helped him and, and other leaders and the B team um, on the lead up to the Paris Agreement. Um, in parallel to, to some of those things, I was chair of a UK government task force. I've now got these sort of fourfold um, um, uh, affiliation with Yale, as I mentioned. I, I only half jokingly put in my run across the, the Sahara a few years ago, um, just because I think I've learned as much about leadership and pursuing goals um, off preparing for that for a year and then executing against that um, as I have against any of the other sectors. So, so hence the sort of the consulting and the teaching now come from um, this, this, this variety. Um, and I'm just so glad to be here with you. It's right on vision and mission for me, right on purpose. Um, this is my vision. I uh, like that everyone can see their path to great work um, and mission uh, that we help, lead, uh, help leaders build purpose driven paths to maximize their positive impact. Um, in terms of context on, on, on all this stuff, I do courses and workshops around Yale, things like The Path, which we've just done recently as a CBA community, connecting purpose to performance. If you're launching a new business, I do a thing called The Plan, Business Planning for Impact, um, The Hunt we're doing today, and The Match, something's putting the entrepreneurs and joiners together. And a couple of courses that I do at the Executive MBA program and the incoming Masters of Environmental Management program called Perspectives on Environmental Leadership starting this fall. Um, so um, I said I said um, that that's all the context. Um, there's the sort of caveats for you, buyer beware. Um, we are going to deliver this at speed, um, um, and there's a lot of content that I could be drawing from, and, and I want to make the most of your lunch hour. Um, and it also, as you can probably spot it already, is delivered with an accent. Uh, Scotland's my home country, so do please put into chat um, if uh, you can. Um, if you're not following me, and I need to repeat something, um, put your hand up. Uh, all those various reactions. Amy is with me to try and um, make sure that I'm, I keep right on those things. Um, the other sort of last caveat is just like that really, um, I, I, I like the analogy of, of building paths through forests. And the idea is that, that really I've got some path building suggestions for you, paths that I know work and ways to get across uh, tricky spots. Um, but it's your forest. Um, you know the trees, you know the layout of the land, you know where you get your, your stuff and what you're really looking for and you live there. Um, so I don't pretend to know all that stuff. So I'm just trying to give you some um, path suggestions. 
So with that in mind, that's a bit about me. Um, I wanted to transition to a poll. If you could get your cell phones out, um, uh, and I, or I think it also works as a separate browser, I'm gonna hop across um, to a poll called Poll Everywhere. Um, and hopefully this will work with you. Um, if it doesn't, we will s soon sort of scooch back into chat. But if you could text uh, last name boy, just four letters there, to 22333 and answer this question. Um, how has the last few months altered your world? Um, and again, I'm using the four point scale to try and get you off the middle. Um, bottom, it's just completely knocked it sideways. I'm a bit of a loss. Two, definitely unsettled it. I'm a bit in flux. Three, interesting. Cause me to pause, think differently, not necessarily a bad way. And then four is this that I feel this is exactly what I needed. It could be the accelerator for improvement. It could be the sort of the hunt, the, the, the start of the hunt that I was always supposed to do. I see quite a few people, uh, uh, results uh, 15 and rising. So I can see quite a few people here coming in. Good, good thing so far from a positivity perspective is, 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 is no Ds as yet, no one Ds. Um, um, but it's all fully anonymous, by the way. So the fact that you're texting, I'm not uh, sort of to getting any data at the back end is just a text uh, from you to the screen. Um, what I will do is take a screen grab of these, these, these four questions and get them in, in for you um, um, and, and sort of put it back into the PowerPoint at the end. And then I just, let's see, go find the, find the, the arrow. Great, thank you. Okay, so, so lots of threes. Next one, um, what are you currently pursuing? Um, are you um, accelerating like you want to prom get promoted in the same organization? Um, are you accelerating but you're looking for a different org in your same industry and path? Are you at a bit of a fork in the road, but you see you're at the fork and you see your new dire direction in a different industry? Or are you more like approaching a fork in the road and you're unsure of the choice ahead? Or is there another way that I haven't characterized it well and, and you're none of those four? But, but see if one of those four uh, things speaks to you. Seems to be like a sort of a, at a fork, New direction, different industry, a clear winner there, um, but 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 a, a nice spread across all the all, all the rest as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, if there's any sort of explanation that sort of bring any of this to life, feel free to use the chat. But as I say, we're going through at speed, so I just wanted to get a feel for where everybody is on their search. Um, do you have a list already of your opportunities that you are looking for, whether it is uh, sort of within your organization, if it's a big one, although not too many people were looking for internal promotions, but the sort of the, the kind of new industry, new thing. Um, where are you at it? And if yes, you have a list, what package is it in? PowerPoint, Excel, Word, a Notes app like Evernote or OneNote. Offline, it's on a piece of paper. More than one of those places above or none of the above yet, it's just in my head. Okay, great. Um, good to see this again. Again, clear winner there in terms of catching a lot of you early in the search where there's sort of none of the above yet. This is in my head. Um, so hopefully this sort of the, the big middle section will actually be um, helpful to you. Um, and then 15% on Excel. I'm actually going to come out that even if you uh, on many of the other things I sort of teach and coach, um, very happy with you choosing the format. I think Excel sort of emerges as a winner on what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, so, 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 so keep watch for that as we, uh, as we go for everyone else. Um, great stuff. And then, um, this is like, again, pure honesty on uh, sort of honest answers is, is totally fine. And as I say, an anonymous, we have some work to do that we could get started on right now, albeit at speed and albeit just a little start. Um, I'm already on it. I've downloaded and printed and started the workbook. I'm ready to start. I printed the sheets. I'm up for some work live. I could grab a piece of paper and pen if you ask me. To be honest, I've got my lunch and other emails. I'm listening for some good nuggets, but that's what I'm doing. This really helps me. Excellent. Thank you. And only 10%, um, 10, 9% falling, 10 percent are actually going to um, multitask on launching emails. But at least I, I, I applaud your honesty for the fourth answer. Um, and thank you for um, 
Yes. Yeah, so yes, please to the third, the, the third one, the clear winners. If you could grab a piece of paper and a pen, um, um, that would be great. Jane Peters is saying the link would not work today. Did did um, did uh, is that is that a sort of ubiquitous thing? Um, maybe. Um, uh, I've had quite a lot of people accessing it today. I, I saw like it, it, it pings me when people access it. Um, if other people could put into the chat, I just downloaded it, it worked fine. I successfully asked it, it did great. I don't think it's a problem with the link. Sometimes then uh, Jane and others, if you had a problem, if you copy and paste it rather than click on it, if you copy and paste the link into the browser and maybe try a different browser, that sometimes helps. Great, but I'm glad that it worked fine for, for, for more than a few of you. Great, and if not, do not worry. A paper and pen is just fine for those in the third column. Awesome, thank you very much. That's great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, switch back over um, um, to, to where we got to here and go into uh, the framework and the structure. Great stuff, thank you very much. So um, this is all based on um, a, a sort of a wider set of um, uh, connected leadership principles and purpose-driven leadership principles that I, I teach in some of the other courses, but it's it's supremely relevant for the hunt, and I want to sort of um, um, sort of sort of bring home why I think that is. But first, the, the the sort of the very simple logic flow that I've been passionate about looking at leadership in all those different sectors that I've been working in over these years, and just saying like, what unites these people and makes sort of great leaders great. Um, Really simple logic flow, just very hard to do. Know why you're here and why those around you are here. Know what's important and be very clear of the destination on those things that you know are important. And then drive your to-dos from the first two and get it on a page when you can. When you get it on a page, you can sort of infect yourself, like you can, you can memorize it, but you can also uh, positively infect others and, and, and sort of keep people to task, hold people to account. So these are the three things that I kind of use as the logic for, as I say, not complicated, but, but, but hard to do. And to extent, this is something that you can then remember after the session. I, I use these sort of four Ps, the idea of like purpose, questioning and confirming it, priorities, clarifying, personalizing the priorities, what's important, potential, have a vivid picture of what success looks like, and performance, connecting it onto a page and illuminating it and, and holding yourself accountable. The idea is, 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 is it's a rope. It's not pillars that you can sort of say one and done and they're unconnected. It's fibers of rope where the strength of your leadership and indeed the strength of your hunt is, 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 is the strong as the weakest of these fibers. So have a think uh, um, uh, how, how that might mean as we go through the flow today. So as the logic flow is applied to the hunt, it's almost like know what really gets you excited. Um, because when you're excited, you're infectious to others and you'll get the job. So know what gets you excited and why you're here. Um, artic be able to articulate what's really important to you and what makes you important to others. And then drive your hunt off the first two things and work off one spreadsheet where you can see it all and you can hold yourself to account. So that's the tweak of the logic flow from the wider leadership model um, to the hunt model. So in terms of the four Ps, this is what we're going to try and nail today. Um, clarifying why you're here, what you want, what really gets you going, what's important, what's not on your search. Priorities, create a highly personalized list of opportunities, totally sort of unique to you. And then potential, imagine what it's like at the other side of this hunt and write that down. When do you want to be at the other side of this hunt? And then performance, a multi-tab spreadsheet that keeps you focused, keeps you honest with yourself and improving. So with that in mind, let's dive in with, 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 with purpose. And the, the important of purpose is like go, going into the why bit first, is this like, if you really know yourself, then the stories are better. Um, they're just an awful lot better. And then when your stories are better and you're more confident about your stories, your sell is better. So the idea of sort of almost like a job pun, I've got to get the sell right. It's like, no, get, get the self right to the stories that really matter to you and then the sell. Um, so, so if we can work from a sort of the inside out, that's, that's the piece here. Um, so if you could either grab a piece of paper um, that those people that, that clearly won on the sort of the, the third bar saying, I can get some if you ask me. Yes, please, get, uh, if you can grab it. If those that downloaded and printed it, um, that's also great. Or if you've got it on a different screen, go for it, whatever you prefer. Um, for those that are drawing, uh, just to, if you can put those, those, those three lines in there, one across the middle and then two, two there. And then you're going to answer these questions relatively quickly now, but you can take more time on it later. Um, you, you're four. Everyone, I said a fork in the questions, everyone's at a fork in the road. Um, I'm at a fork in the road right now. We're all at certain forks in the road and multiple forks in the road through our life. So at the fork you're at right now, have a think about it. Why did you decide to be at this fork? Why did you choose to be here? This point in the journey in your career and also this set of choices that you see up ahead of you. Why did you decide to be here? Own, own that choice. 
And then the second piece about your fork is why do you think you're a good person to be here? What's in your knapsack? What did you bring? Uh, what attributes have you brought to this fork in the road? You got this far, you got, you know, you got picked to do what you've done so far and you're good to have around in general. Why is that? What, what, what do you think you've got there? Next up, your horizons. One artificially long, next one artificially short. Artificially long, why are you excited about where you could be in 10 years? This is not the standard interview question that says, you know, I, you know where do you see yourself in 10 years? I don't necessarily, I'm not so interested in a position or a post. It's more, why are you excited about the 10 year you? What, what, what are you doing that makes you excited about that? And then number four, artificially short horizon. If you knew you only had a few months left on the planet, or a few months left before you had to give up work or you won the lottery, whatever it was, like, like, but it's cut short, working life. Um, what would you ensure gets done and why? And then the last one, what's your inner engine? What can you not almost like help getting out there? Um, when are you in flow? And that means like, like sort of what activities cause you to forget to eat and drink. And if you can describe why those things, obviously not in the few minutes we've got together, but sort of, you know, so have jot some stuff down. At work, <coughs> excuse me, at play, and then back when you were younger, back in childhood, when are you in flow? And then the last one, obviously a big, a big question, but why are you here for your one wild and precious life, as Mary Oliver said? Like, like can, can, you, can you jot down a quick answer to that? <coughs> and then you see a little box in the middle if you've downloaded the template. Um, we're not gonna do it now, but just that idea of like these six questions hopefully gets you thinking. And then in the end, you might be able to put together some sort of leader impact statement saying, these are the things I fundamentally believe in. I bring X and Y to the stuff, to the world, and I want to create, help, do whatever. Um, but that's not for now, but that's sort of where you might put it later. And again, as I say, we do far more of this on the connected leadership uh, stuff um, uh, more broadly, but this is for the hunt. So that's the piece there. So get cracking on that if you can. Um, I'm going to sort of just introduce you to another couple of set of questions, the next page um, of, of, of questions to have a think through. Um, but feel free to jot away um, on, on, again, first and best answers, just little, little sort of keywords rather than long sentences. And if you've done this before, um, say in the Connected Leadership uh, Workshop just uh, three weeks ago, um, have a think about the quote here. No one ventures into the same river twice. It's not the same river. It's not the same person. Like you, the, Answering these questions again, now with this context of a job hunt, um, or answering them in six months' time or three months' time, whenever you feel like it's good, it's always nice to revisit sort of fundamental why questions and anchor you in your purpose. Um, so the, the, the particular questions I'm adding today for the hunt is things that might help you tease apart why are you looking for what you're looking for um, in, in, the next, in, the next, in the next jump. Um, so I call the first group the huge or nothing group. And this is from sort of interviewing and, and coaching uh, executive coaches outside Yale and sort of one-on-one -on -one career coaching in Yale. That there seems to always be a huge or nothing group. And that might be like coast, it's like, like I have to be on the West Coast or I'm not leaving India or um, sort of, you know, sort of uh, it's gotta be five miles from New York, et cetera. Um, or it means nothing. You could go anywhere for the right opportunity. Partner, family, huge considerations there. Um, I've, uh, you know, sort of a wife and three kids here sort of that is going to be fundamental to any choice I make and if it's fundamental to you write that down faith identity again huge for some people and not so huge for others so put anything down in there that comes to mind very quickly as the sort of the huge or nothing category then there's the more tactical whys. And again, these have come up from sort of a multiple conversations and, 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 and coaching on things like that sort of tease apart these things that, um, that, that you might um, uh, need. Um, for instance, what problems are you passionate about solving in the world? If, 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 if those are problems that you wanna lean in on, whether it's climate change, say the school, you know, sort of connected to the school of the environment or, or healthcare or whatever it is, it's like, put something like that down. What, what problems is, do you want to solve in the world? And then should those problems be core to the organization's mission or, or the industry's mission for all those industry switchers that are, are, that are out in the audience today? Or is it, is it okay if it's part of what you do? A good example of that is say Patagonia. They're not actually fixing climate change, but they're one of the sort of almost like most good, least evil clothes manufacturers or sporting manufacturers. So <clears throat> it's core, it's, it's, it's almost like it's, part, it's a core part of what they do, but they're not fixing climate change. So that's maybe a good example there. It's what, what I mean by should those problems be core to the org's mission. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next piece here is it's like what type of uh, what type of org do you want to join? A fixer upper, one that's on the ropes, um, and you are going to fix it. Uh, that's exciting to you, or you want to learn from the best in class and be a, sort of the best that, that you know, sort of you know, sort of learn from the best. Uh, consulting side is a very different energy to client side. Um, um, and sort of thinking through that energy, those, those energies and what kind of things you want to do. Um, small versus large, startup challenger versus established incumbent and, 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 and any others that might fit into that tactical. And then the one, the one I, call, I call sort of maybe less important because I, I, I do think it is, is this like, is there a specific industry sector? Um, is there a specific direct experience that you've got that you think I have to do something that leverages my direct experience? And is there a particular corporate form? Is it like a 501c3? I want to work for a nonprofit. I want to work for for profit, etc. I just think those things are the ones that most people get hung up on and they're potentially end up being the least important, especially for those industry switchers out there who are looking for the next thing. Is this like maybe those things are things that you look at last rather than first. So have a quick, I'm just going to leave you with another couple of minutes just to jot down um, sort of answers to, to, to those. I'm going to put them both up on the screen at the same time, albeit too small, but hopefully you've got them in the workbook. The link to the workbook is in the bottom right-hand corner there. Um, and then quick answers to the six purpose questions. And also, could you circle the question in the six that got you thinking most, that caused you to write something interesting down, for instance, that you haven't written down or thought before? And then also have a think about the, an the, the, the answer to the kind of couple of questions in the second page. You think, oh, that's an interesting question for me. Uh, the others aren't so much. And for those, I'm just going to be silent for a couple of minutes. And for those that are done, if you could put into the chat function, uh, the as I say, the number on the questions one to six that got you thinking most and the question in the more tactical hunt questions that, that, that was important to you. Feel free to go for it, and I'll, I'll come back in about two or three minutes. Go for it. Okay, a couple of minutes are up now, and I know this is not enough time. The idea is to give you tools for today, and then you're off on your own after, after today. Um, but thanks so much for those that started to put answers in. Keep them coming, please. Question five, uh, winner there, and then some of the tactical wise. Help, help me split out the qualities. Thanks, Chris. Um, Dan, on the big, the, big, the big number six, why are you here? And then the tactical one, what problems are you passionate about solving? Thank you. Um, question four, Julie says, so hard. Uh, it is. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll explain why um, in, in, the next, in the next slide. Any, another couple there? Even just the number of the question one to six that was sort of more interesting or got, or got you thinking? Thanks, Jane. Another vote, for, another vote for question four on the sort of making us feel, you sort of think both long and short. Again, I'll explain that in a second. Five, four, oh, a few, all just came in all at once. A few threes, never thought about that before. Fours, fours, tactical threes. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. That's great. Um, um, you, so you dropped into chat. Um, anyone particularly I urge to share? Um, feel free to come off mute. No worries. It's 12, it's 1230. I wasn't really expecting it on a 12 to 1 slot here, but feel free to keep uh, using the chat function as well. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody, and, and a great stream of of uh, sort of, uh, of of interaction there. Um, further options, uh, you're being you're being true to the to, to my bar question about are you actually going to do stuff uh, uh, during the hour? Thank you very much. Um, so further options for you here, if you're interested in this piece, I think is a vital part of the hunt. Is is this is, is like is like if it comes from here, it's going to be more successful. Um, so further options is to read and watch other stuff. There's some great readings that is put in lots of classes that I do. Clayton Christensen. For from Harvard, um, recently passed away, but amazing gentleman. How will you measure your life? Um, great TED Talk, great HBR article. Simon Sinek, leading from the why, um, 50 million views plus every time I, I, I sort of go back to it, he's added another few million on there. It's, 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 that's a huge TED Talk. And all the things that have spawned from that. Our very own Amy Rosneski at, at the School of Management on the difference between um, a job, a career, and calling. Um, so that's that's a piece that is also interesting as well. Um, I, I do have some links uh, at, 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 to uh, the, these these at the, at the back. There's not actually a bibliography as much as some references. I also have some blue slides that I'm going to be coming through, which is like another set of articles, which are sort of sort of almost like the scholarly research that backs up why this might all be good ideas or not. Um, 
Um, and, and then do, you know, sort of finish this with a bit more time on your own. I've sort of get, cruelly given you just five minutes to do some really serious questions there. Um, how, you know, sort of get, get a glass of wine if that's what you want and, and, and you know, sort of sit there and, and, and sit with this stuff. It's, it's, it, or go for a walk, it's, it's, it's good stuff. And then Ikigai. Um, Ikigai is, is a term that if you Google it, you're gonna get this little pedal diagram very easily. It's easily found on the internet. Um, but that's just the idea of the concept of the intersect, the Japanese concept of the intersect between what you love doing what the world needs, what you're good at, and what you can be paid for. And the, and the sweet spot is obviously in the middle if you can be doing those things. So that's another good one to, to, to kind of go after and, and, and sort of plot and maybe write things down into. And then personality tests, such as um, uh, via.org, I mentioned at the start when I was introducing myself. Um, there's some really good strengths in there is values in action, via, uh, academically rigorous um, um, personality test of, of, of all of them to sort of say like, what am I spiking out? What do I can, what can I not help getting into the world? Um, that stuff will come, tend to, tends to come up in your top three signature strengths. Okay, um, I wanted to now sort of uh, just give you sort of the behind the scenes version of that, the, the six questions and say, why did I ask them in the context of the hunt? Um, and, and, and really also why, to the extent they're also useful to leaders and do these with executives teams too. Why are they useful questions? And um, because what, what do they sort of unearth? Um, in terms of question one, it tends to be your anchor, like own those choices of why you're here. Um, and if you're feeling a little bit adrift, you know, come back and say, I, decide, I, you know, I decided this this is the point of the journey these are the set of choices i have now 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 let's start acting according to my anchor um this one number two is your boost it's your pitch it's just like there's not oh, there's not too many people on on here from new york you're you're, you're not not therefore you and me uh are raised in scotland we're not naturally trained um to to uh be sort of really good at telling everyone what we're good at in fact you sometimes get a little hit across the side of the head if you if you did you were like that and bragging uh when you were younger so instead like this is your little corner where you're just like i'm good at this stuff and it's really important for the hunt because you have to be good at actually selling that stuff too so this is where your boost is. This is where your pitch is. Um, in terms of uh, number three, um, why are you excited about where you could be in 10 years? Keep your eye on the prize. Is your current set of choices building towards this? And if not, why not? Um, what will be making you happy in the 10 year you? And are you doing those things now? Um, useful words potentially for your leader impact statement in the middle um, or your personal vision and mission. Um, um, and and, and is, is that stuff uh, all, all there um, in terms of you sort of sort of the, that, that eye on the prize. And then number four, it's kind of, and people had some trouble with it and almost understandably so, it's, 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 it's actually a little sneaky one because it's getting under your rib cage and, and giving you an artificial deadline for, but to surface the stuff that's really important if not necessarily urgent. So those are, so whatever you put in there, whatever you're struggling with, that's really useful for your priorities because obviously you are here for many more months, um, and, but those things are probably still absolutely vitally important. Um, on, the, on, on number five, top right hand corner, um, they're, they're useful in different ways. Um, 5A, let's craft your next hunt, let's craft your job based on having stuff that's in 5A in your week. And if not, why not? Um, this is the stuff that you're going to shine at um, and you're in flow when you do it. Can your new job have this stuff in it? And this is going to be really useful in our second section. Um, and, then, uh, and then recharge, 5B, whatever you're doing then and now to keep yourself sane, let's hope that your week, your calendar has 5B in it. Whether it's, you know, sort of running in the hills or sort of kayaking on the beaches or making bonsai trees, whatever it is, like whatever you said there, let's make sure that your week has that in there because that's going to make you a sort of more recharged person. And then 5C, sometimes this is actually a really useful frame in here, whether it's jumping off a cliff into the ocean uh, for those sea band people, building Lego, going out biking, um, and, you know, sort of reading books. Think of this new hunt at, anchored in that kid's um, strength. So if you love jumping off a cliff, like that's what this hunt is, is jumping off a cliff into the river, much like uh, the quote uh, photo I, I, I gave you. You just, you love doing that. If you hate water and you, you sort of, you were brought up um, in the middle and not nowhere near a coast, then don't use that analogy. Do, use the bike out into the, in, in, into the, into the wilderness or use the, the, the Lego box of, of something important. But sort of, there's a really strong sort of childhood psychological anchors in there saying that's what this hunt is. And then finally, like on the why are you here, hopefully it's just useful anyway, but the idea of like a mission calling, the, the, you know, can, can, can it align over time? Um, that sort of why are you here on the planet is also aligned with your hunt. 
So that's the sort of the six questions. Uh, and again, again uh, um, and then more particular for the hunt, this piece here is just like, they just don't ignore who you are. There's no point in sort of like making yourself terribly unhappy or wrenching yourself from your identity um, um, or where you need to be in the world or who you need to be with um, for your search. So, so like, please don't ignore who you are and put that into your search. Um, these are hopefully really helpful with filtering. Thank you for the people on the chat that some of these questions do try and tease these things apart. Feel free if you if you come up with other questions, uh, let, let, let me know. It's always good to kind of tease apart those things because it helps with filtering. And this, as I say, it sort of it may help, the, maybe, uh, but, but but it's like it's like too often people are fixated on the, that right hand side. And so if you it's sort of hopefully you've got some rich uh, fil, uh, criteria to come from the previous answers. So with that in mind, let's let's keep moving on. Um, let's go onto onto, onto priorities. Um, and, and the idea here is when I'm teaching leadership, I, I, I um, in general, I, I I really love this analogy popularized by Stephen Covey in the '50s about rocks, pebbles, and sand getting put into the jar of life. If you put the rocks in first, like the row on the top, uh, then pebbles fit around the edges and sand fits around the edges. You fitted everything in the jar. But if you let sand fit in uh, in first and then pebbles, then you sort of get to the end of life, or indeed in this context, the job search, and the rocks aren't in there. So it almost like it's sort of a flexible and visual metaphor to say, I want to live the, 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 the row on the top. I do not want to live um, the row on the bottom. Um, while we're doing it to the, to the hunt, I've kind of adapted it slightly. And I suggest for you, and you can see it in your workbook, um, I, I suggest for you two triangles to try and take this concept of priorities uh, to the next level for the hunt. And, see, and, and think of two, uh, two triangles, because it also helps you in pitching and pitching yourself, which you're going to be doing a lot. What makes the opportunity crucial slash great? As in, um, I am really looking for a job in X doing Y because of Z. Um, and in one sentence, that would fit on the top of the triangle. Just one sentence. And there it is. That's the sentence. If, if, if you know, like the CEO of the dream organization asked me, you know, sort of, what are you looking for? I would give them that, that one sentence. And if they were sufficiently interested, that classic elevator test, I'd say, well, actually, there's four things that make that up. A, B, C, and D. It's in New York, it's in healthcare, and it's uh, got tech and um, something else. Um, you know, so whatever those things are. And you've got the sort of the A, B, C, and D about what is most interesting and crucial about this, about this opportunity. And then if you're, the person's still interested, then you've got anchor stories. It's like, why New York? It's like, well, this, 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 and this, and I've been on Wall Street, I've done this, or, or it's in Patagonia because, you know, sort of, I love that part of the world because I was there because of this. Um, the idea of your, your stories that are really part of who you are and, and make you come alive are hooked on to those things that you're really crucial, which is hooked on to your sentence, this is what I'm looking for. So that's the idea of the triangle, that you, know, you could pitch, what makes an opportunity crucial slash great? What are you looking for? Um, and then you can pitch it at the four item level and then you can pitch it at the multiple stories level and then you could go on forever if somebody's super interested in all the detail. But don't get yourself lost. And then vice versa, on, uh, so, or, or sorry, correspondingly on the right hand side, the suggestion here is what about you or what about me as you write this? What about me is crucial and great for them? I'm you know, sort of Scottish, I have gray hair, but it's short. Um, you know, sort of whatever it is, um, and I'm, I, I've got hope, I've got zest, whatever it came out of my via. Um, those might be the things that make me up, um, but, but, but you've got things that are, are kind of completely special to you. So what about you could be crucial and great for them. And again, be proud of your identities because you can't hide those things and you want to be those things, those, those, could, those could be in there. So that's the idea of the two triangles. You've got this sheet now um, um, on your workbook or just quickly, you know, sort of have a go with uh, like, again, pen and piece of paper, different colors, whatever you like to do. And just think what's crucial about the opportunity I'm looking for. And then what about me is gonna be crucial for them, I hope. And then think of the, like, like a couple of reasons and then maybe some of your favorite stories that like, like bring you to life. Uh, for somebody new, uh, say I was interviewing for a job, you, you, these, these stories you'd love to tell. So I'm just going to give you like a minute um, to, to, to have, a, have, have, a, have a think about those. And again, I'm conscious of moving at speed. So if, if, if any of this is unclear in terms of a concept, uh, feel free to drop that into chat and I'll, I'll, I'll come back and revisit. So yeah, start to sketch this. Do you, again, free format, do whatever you like on this. But the idea is you don't get lost within your pitch. 
uh, the pitch about what you're looking for and how excited you are to be in the room with somebody else um, that, that could give you the job. And likewise, um, you know, say excited about be about what you are selling to the world, what you're bringing into the world. Um, quick exercise and homework, if you fancy it. Um, I'm not gonna, we're not going to do it now. But the idea is to pitch your two, two triangles to a friend or to a colleague. Clearly communicate what's really interesting and great about the positions or the orgs that you're pursuing, what might be really interesting to those orgs about you. And then you could switch if they were also in the hunting mode. And then sort of, how did it feel? What feedback did you get? Was it confusing? Uh, where were you compelling? Where did you come to life? All, all that sort of stuff. And, and again, the parallels between what makes a great leader once you're in the job and, what, and, and, and hunting sort of continue. There's a, there's, as I said, there's be a sort of a couple of extra readings here as to the extent you're interested in, in reading around this. HBS Working Knowledge from Bill George, the idea of like authentic leaders uh, do exactly this stuff, explore their life stories, engage in reflection, seek honest feedback from colleagues and friends how this is working, understand their purpose and tailor their style and their pitch accordingly. So it speaks to this, uh, the, this two triangle model. Okay, so that's pr purpose, um, questioning, confirming, priorities, clarifying and personalizing, potential. Very quick here. Um, again, it's, it's, it's more involved when, we're, when I'm talking about sort of people's lives and people's companies on a page. But in terms of the job, you've probably got, if you've got your, your life uh, sort of rocks all sorted, um, you may well have a, have a rock that is about your job, your career, your calling, contribution, impact, whatever you want to call that rock. Um, you've, you've got that. And the idea that you want to change is, why, is, is sort of almost why we're here today. What I suggest you do on another piece of paper and, and, and sort of after this, after this session together, put a date up at the top and say like, by, by this date, I will have done the following. And the, key, and the key piece here is writing for yourself a couple of sentences in the past tense that have happened. Like I will have authentically networked with 20 people. That's not saying you've got a job, but by Labor Day, you will have called and, 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 and chatted to 20 people. Um, or I will have landed that dream job in that company. It's like whatever you think it is, it's toastable. As in you can get it, but you'd have a huge smile on your face and you want to say cheers to your favorite other person that's there um, if the sentence that you wrote down was true. And feel free to think in concrete terms, qualitative, quantitative, like I've reached out to this many people, or qualitative, like I've got the dream job whatever it is, but write something down here, um, you know, sort of um, about your search, about your hunt, that is almost like holding yourself to account, but it also makes you smile. And it says like, yes, I want that to be true by that date. And, and, and write that down. Um, um, yes, so, so, so a great question here from, from somebody on the triangles and how they relate the sort of priorities and how they relate to the purpose. Yes, they're related. So um, sit, what I suggest with the, um, the triangles is you sit with them and, 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 and on one side as they're blank and you have your answers to the six questions and the more detailed hunt questions next to you and go, right, what of this stuff is the most important things that's crucial about my opportunity? Can you narrow it down to four, in other words? Can you aggregate it up? And then can you aggregate all the things that make you special into these kind of three or four buckets as well? So they are related. Thank you for uh, the clarifying question. Um, um, so, so, that's, so that's something to do, as I say, outside, outside this time. Um, so let's get on to the last one, which is performance. Like, how do you actually sort of hold yourself to account and move on with a bit of structure here? Um, as I say, I think there's about 13% people said, yep, I've got an Excel. So for 87% of you and even the 13% that have started it, here's some thoughts here where I think a spreadsheet type thing will help you um, on, 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 on the structure of holding yourself to account. First thing is create a file and title it something that you'd want to open regularly. Like don't title it like something boring. Uh, title it something that you will say, yes, I want to double click on that and trip up over it. Put it on the top level or on your desktop or somewhere. So you want to open it every day. Homepage of his Google Sheets. And then maybe put some of your answers to your purpose questions and your why questions, the stuff we just did together into a tab so that you can actually sort of, um, you can actually sort of refer to and connect all those things, those why questions with your criteria. And then now to the tab that you may well have already, call it something like the master list, the pipeline, the big list. But the key thing about the big list is list more than the vacancies. Don't hunt, you know, hunt for a job just off the things where you see a vacancy. It's a little bit like in commercial landscape, you know, sort of waiting for an RFP to come out and then react to it. It's just like the people that are getting the contracts are writing the RFPs and helping the client write the request for proposals. Um, so list more than vacancies. Who do you want to work for? 
um, and, and it could be a person in an organization, could be different verticals, et cetera. List more than the vacancies. Then the standard stuff, the name, you know, how you're contacted, et cetera. But then bring back your triangles and now they're column headings. What's crucial about the opportunity for me? What am I looking for? And then what of you may be crucial to them? And then you've got three to four criteria on what's crucial about what I'm looking for. It's in New York, it pays a lot, um, you know, sort of it solves climate change, whatever the things are. And what of you may be crucial to them? I mix finance and, and, and writing. I do this, I do this well, et cetera. And they're gonna want that. And, and, and once you've got the sort of six to seven uh, or six to eight um, um, column headings and in the master list, then this is what you can, you, you, you can create. The idea is that um, you, rate, you rate the um, opportunities. So say the opportunity is with, I don't know, Yale University. I, I, rate, I rate the Yale School of the Environment opportunity and I say, I think like this one really matches my criteria, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then I think they're really gonna want what I've got to offer, so, uh, you know, sort of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And vice versa, just, it's your own feelings. So just concentrate on almost like a brain gut conversation here, which is like, this is what I really am looking for. And then this is what I think this company uh, is, is, is thinking right now, or they would think if I, if, I got in, if, if I got in the room. So the idea is like, once you sort this, then effective, effectively what you're getting is, is, is effectively a return of your gut feel and you're almost like what you've been thinking about for a while as a league table top to bottom. And if you haven't, then it's just because you haven't got, quite got the criteria right or you haven't quite got the ratings right. But once you've got the criteria that sort of searches for what you're really looking for and what you want to get out into the world and your ratings are about right, then this should return you the league table of where you should be hunting. Sort of pause there because that's probably the most important thing of the session is just like, 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 and it's almost like where we've pulled all this stuff together that we've talked about so far. So the idea is that you would get um, an org and an opportunities tab that looks like this, the organization, uh, the position and the opportunity, the contact. And then I'm gonna come on to the, the, the hustle in a second, but the idea of like, like hunting off, off, off this sheet, you can do. Um, have I done all I can for now? When did I last reach out and connect with this person? How many days ago was that? It's all automatically calculated. And then what am I looking for? Why might I be interesting to them? And this is all in a, 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 another free template, which is the link at the top there. And again, this will be sent out um, um, this will be sent out um, in the after email. And so you said, how do you get the numbers in the cell? You just type in the number, like I rate that they're in the right geography, seven, because they're in Brooklyn and I really wanna be in Manhattan. Um, I, if it's in Manhattan, I rate it to 10. Uh, that's where their headquarters are. And if it's San Francisco, well then it's a two because it's on the wrong coast. So you put the numbers into the cell, the heat map is created automatically and the average is also created automatically on the left-hand column. So that's uh, hopefully answering the question that just popped up in the chat. So that's all sort of set up for you. And then the aim, as I say here, is it's like, it's your brain gut connection as a list is now sort of sort of sees itself. And, and, and again, if we've got this right, there's hopefully this feeling when you first sort it, say, yep, that's who I'm hunting for. I'm hunting at, at the top. And also have a quick think about how personal this list is gonna be once you've done it because it's all the things that you're really looking for and it's all the things that they might be looking for in you, it becomes a much more personal and a much more sort of targeted um, and unique job search and unique hunt compared to say, the sort of scanning the vacancies that are available that come to sort of outgoing MBAs at, at the School of Management, for instance. So another piece here, another suggestion is a second tab that's almost the same as the sort of the opportunities tab, but you collect people and uh, interesting people that matter on that, on, on that tab. So they're not necessarily gonna be a hiring person in a job, um, but it, it, they are gonna be useful to you. Now they, they, again, they might be sort of list potentially useful connections, people, but you're also useful to them. This is authentic networking in a sense, like, like you, you, they're gonna help you in the world, you're gonna help them in the world. So standard stuff here. And then some rating criteria here, like how useful to your search, how helpful can you be to them? Are there criteria unique to you? And again, I've put some suggestions of that into uh, the Excel template uh, that you will all have access to as well. Um, and again, have you done enough? Have you connected with, with, with these great mentors in, oh, oh dear, it's three months. I'd better drop that person an email. 
So that would be like, I've, I've kind of teasingly called that the people who matter tab, and then you, you, the organ opportunities who matter tab. And they might be headhunters, mentors, mentees, connectors, students, etc. whatever you think you, it goes into the people tab. Really top person here, my friend, like how might they help me improve? How might I help them? And then two more tabs at least, and then you're done with the spreadsheet. And then I'll close with about you know, five to 10 minutes of, 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 of sort of how do we actually sort of, sort of you know, make this operational in the world. Um, <clears throat> um, two more tabs at least uh, uh, that I suggest here. If you've got your sort of your purpose tab now, you've got your a master list of opportunities, and then you've got your kind of almost like interesting people that will help you with that other one, um, the sort of the people to collect. And I'm not looking for a job, obviously, at the moment. I'm very happy, but like, like I, collect, I still collect people. I still collect really interesting people. That I think, oh, I can help them in the world, and they can help me. This is awesome. They should be on my list, and I should be keeping in touch with those people. Um, and then you can almost like dial up the opportunities one again when you think you sh it's, time, it's time to loop for the next thing. Um, and then, so here's two other, uh, other thoughts. I think potentially a hot tab and a cold tab. Idea is cold tab, if something goes wrong with your master list and I don't know, um, Yale rejects you, um, don't keep Yale sitting there nice and high on your master list and knowing you every day that they reject you. Instead, just move that row and take it off into the cold tab. Or if you have courage, just delete it entirely. It's totally up to you. But that idea of, of, of you can um, actually just sort of take it away and get your master list focused on the live search and the live leak table and the idea of like 80-20 effort, I'm up in the top, searching off the top. So cold tab to get rid of the ones that are no longer current. But then the most important one on the, on the next stage on the hustle is, is the hot tab. Is this like, like say you've got Yale or Procter & Gamble or whatever it is, or a small startup. Um, it's just like, if you're really interested in it, create a tab for it and then start to really go in deep on the research. Like, like what's their org chart like? Like the turnover, what projects, who's investing in them and why? Um, what, where are the best news leads for them? Like go wild on the research for the hot ones. And again, that would sap your energy if you were doing it for 30, and it might be searching, sapping your energy now if you're trying to sort of spread yourself thin across lots of different potential leads. But if you're hunting off the top few in the kind of the, the rating of the master list and then creating a hot tab for people that you're really interested in and companies you're really interested in, then that hot tab is actually a pleasure hopefully to fill out because you're finding out more about what you want to do in life. So that's the idea of the spreadsheet. And that's the idea of like crunching all this stuff from purpose to priorities to potential to performance into one spreadsheet that can hold yourself accountable on how to do this stuff. Um, I just want to uh, sort of finish last section of the day, just the last 10 minutes on um, like, how does this kind of, how can this come to life in sort of strategies and tactics? Um, on, uh, first thing on the, on the research stage, the sort of the go wide first, consider the resources at your disposal. Um, for instance, if you're at Yale and you're a student, there's an enormous amount of databases. If you're in a company, there must be, there might be some databases there that are just like, uh, that are all there part of a subscription. Um, and you're not harming anybody by sort of lo looking at, 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 and crunching the databases. Um, if you're Yale alumni, I know there are many uh, here um, that are on today. It's just like, well, you could, you could, you got a fantastic resource there in the directory. So click on that, the sort of that red button and go at it and see, see who's there to help you. And you probably have, have already. Um, in the ecosystem within Yale, there's an enormous amount going on there um, at the career developments offices. Like y Yale College has got some interesting stuff if you're on the younger end. Um, and then um, the, the, the guys at um, the Yale School of the Environment, um, they, they sketched this one out for me, which I think is awesome, just pre name change that says FES forestry and environment but the idea is that like here are all the people and things that surround you um, that want you to want to help you get on uh, everything from CDO staff being critical here obviously but classmates network fellows coaches professional skills workshops etc and they're all here to surround you and if even in working life if you're in I know plenty of you in working life that may also be true think of this the, the, the circle that surrounds you um, um, it's CDO websites. Uh, here's just um, um, two very good ones here uh, from the sort of home schools that I'm sort of representing here, Yale School of the Environment uh, and the Yale School of Management. Just want to pick out a couple of things here that are just gems, like employment and salary data of, of, of the CDO, like, like who's coming out of there and where are they going? Um, and then summer internships and research project funding, like I want to do this first in order to be more valuable. Well, there's, there's the funding. So lots of great stuff there. And then librarians. Um, again, there's probably just public libraries, but then again, in places like Yale, you sort of pick your, pick your library of choice, pick your name and say, I'm looking for this type of list. Can, can you help me? 
So that's to go wide. But then the idea of like, 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 uh, watch for this. This is a piece of research saying that, like, if you if you only sort of pursue the elusive best, then you know, sort of, um, um, and then you got this such a large number of lists. This is like, then imagine, keep keep going, kind of keep trying to filter it down, keep trying to go towards the top. Otherwise, and then 80, 20 effort towards the top. Uh, don't don't keep going wide uh, for so long. Um, and then two, a couple of questions just to consider here in terms of a question when you're sort of juggling with a sort of the, the kind of the less than ideal internships or temporary and permanent. I quite like the analogy of, of like the parable. If you can take the parable upwind and go straight to where you want to go, great. Um, if you think I know where I want to go, but um, I, I, I'm the sailing boat on the right and I need to tack here, tack here and tack here. I need to pick up these skills over here and then I got to pick up these skills over here and then I'll get upwind. Um, then, then potentially that's the case. But again, just thinking through the questions we did at the start will help you go, that is why like, that, that this next thing is worth it and I, can, I, and I can go all in. The other piece that I also like to think about is the question that you might want to consider between passion and expertise. Too often people are saying, well, what am I really passionate about? And they get very, very kind of in knots as, 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 answering that question. I said, well, actually sometimes passion follows expertise and, and, and not the other way around. So sometimes you need to get good at something and, and sort of work at it, something that you're interested in and want to learn more on, um, but you're not necessarily, quote, passionate yet, and you become passionate the more you get experts. So think of the order there sometimes. And then finally, sort of the big, best, that's big session is like, like how, is, how does the hassle work? How do you, how do you, get, the, how do you get this done? Um, and the idea here is like, just to, just to, you know, sort of, you need to hustle. Uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is going to be hard. This is a, a refugee that stood up Psy Canary Wharf with his CV in a box underneath his uh, sort of very well-dressed and suited. It's just like, you've got to hustle. Um, so hustle from the hot tab. Find things on LinkedIn in the news. Uh, it tells you, for instance, that, you know, so somebody in your industry just scored $23 million of investment. So therefore, you can get to that person before they've even written their first job description because they've got the investment, but they haven't got the time yet to write the job description. Go in and say, well, thanks, Dan. This looks amazing. Um, can, I, uh, can I help you write what you need to do in order to spend that $23 million? And hold yourself to account on the hustle. That's this middle piece here. Have I done enough? And when was the last time I reached out to these important people? And how many days ago was that? Um, the self-contained forwarder email is like is like getting introductions. It's like is sending an email to somebody who you need to forward it with no effort. The idea and and there's these articles which will be in the links and the resources um, in, within the PowerPoint on the, like how do you package the perfect email so it's no effort for a well-connected person to get you to the person you need. And then once you're sort of circling around the stakeholders and the thing you really want, I love this two by two matrix. Have a think about who's influential to you and who's supportive of you and in, in your search. And can you plot these people on there? Like how important are they and how supportive? And then those important and supportive key champions, give them jobs to do, help them, uh, sorry, get them to help you in, this, in the search. Key interesting people, I use the British definition of interesting there, are people that are influential but negative to you. So, so like, uh, is there a strategy to deal with them or is there a way to, that a key champion can help you with them? Um, fans are people that are supportive but less influential. Can they mobilize? Can they, can they tap you into key champions that you might not know yet? And then don't get worried about the people that are not influential and not positive to your, to your search. They're almost like, by definition, the ones that you, that you need to sort of spend less time worrying about. Um, um, and then last the couple of things are sort of like top things that potential professionals really wish you knew, like get your CV reviewed, get your covering letter reviewed, practice the interviews, practice the pitches, um, you know, sort of, you know, sort of do your research. And then in terms of this stuff, uh, again, grounded in the research, Ibarra, Hermani Ibarra and others have done some great stuff on sort of strategies for reinventing your career. Just act. Like, 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 like don't just introspect, find new paths, find people, not just work and find meaning in the everyday, and then you become more in infectious because it's real. You're, se you're seizing the day, you're being your, your, yourself. Um, so I'm gonna leave you with a couple of uh, shapes uh, uh, and, and then a one page summary that brings all this stuff together. Apologies, it's 101. We're just gonna go over in just two minutes if that's okay. Um, I'll wrap up with a, with, with a one slide of the whole hour. Um, uh, the idea is this like, um, from thinking to the interview to the call is thinking of two triangles and a square. It's like thinking, like, like for instance, you're planning a really important call or getting to that person. What does the triangle look like just for them? Why am I interested in talking to that person? Or why am I interested in talking to that, uh, that, that company and have, have a pyramid for them? 
And then why do I think I'd be great for this org, this position in front of this person and do a specific, almost like a call plan um, for each one. And then the square is box breathing. And the idea is like reset. You have to be able to breathe. You have to be able to go, this is me. Um, and box breathing is this thing grounded like Navy SEAL suit, et cetera. Just breathe in for four, fill up, hold for four at the top, breathe out for four, empty out and hold the empty for four. And then just go around that box and reset and you're ready. You're ready for anything. You've got your best self ready for it. And that talking of that, I love this quote um, uh, from Maya Angelou, be yourself, just be better. Um, because like, 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 don't try and be somebody you're not. Cause the worst thing about that is you're going to get a job that, that is, is not matched to who you, who you really going to who, who you really want to be. Um, so in closing, I just, I love the picture that uh, CBA gave me and they found me, found me this picture here on, on the Jaguar because it should be like a lone hunt. It's this, like if you've created this spreadsheet, like it's only you that's looking in this particular universe and it's your stuff to get into the world. I like the way that the Jaguar hunts. Um, the, the, I used to have a, a picture of, of, of the hunting dogs, but see, only, only this one and this one are looking somewhere different for something else to eat. Um, these guys are looking at somebody else who's got the job. So, so, so the idea of like, like making sure you've got the sort of, you can hunt in packs, but then make sure like your piece, your job, like you're on your unique uh, little piece of highway. This was it, there's no traffic jam on the extra mile. Um, so to finish off last slide, uh, the hunt on a page is really like, think about the framework and the structure, like, like that idea of connected leadership, your purpose, priorities, potential performance, and get it onto a spreadsheet if you can. And then strategy and tactics, research, explore, go wide, but then select and tack and focus and then hustle and persevere about that hustle. You will need to, you will need to hustle and then be yourself through all this if you can and breathe. Um, so with that in mind, uh, thanks so much uh, for your time and energy. This is the link to a survey we'd love you to put in, but again, I'll, we'll send it out in a post uh, uh, meeting uh, survey. Um, we'll have the slides available. Uh, we'll have the Excel template available that you can duplicate off Google Sheet. And I can stick around for another couple of moments. If there's questions, uh, you can just drop them into the chat and I'll keep talking. But for everyone else that had 12 to 1 uh, Eastern, 9 a.m. all the way through to uh, late afternoon and evening in India. Thanks very much for joining us and uh, we'll hopefully see you at the next CBA webinar. Uh, and you can indeed connect or follow me on LinkedIn, no problem. I will try and look at LinkedIn later and make sure I accept, uh, especially if you put something in the title about this workshop and I'll know you haven't just uh, uh, sort of searched for me, you've, uh, you, 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 we, we were connected today. And yes, um, yes, I'm, uh, I, I, do do, I do do sort of personal stuff as well. So yep, feel free to contact on that.